So weapons definitely seem to level up really slowly in Black Ops Cold War, but today I'm going to be sharing the fastest ways to level up your guns by getting more weapon XP in Season 2. So obviously weapon XP is needed for unlocking camo challenges and also getting better attachments to go on more streaks and so on, so it's really important and obviously to get you know the best kind of class setups. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are really wanting to level up as fast as possible and you feel like the grind in Cold War is just insanely slow. So before we get into it very quickly, I'm doing a giveaway on my Season 2 Battle Pass video, so if you're interested in getting some free COD points, check out that video in order to enter the giveaway. I'll also have a tips and tricks playlist in the description with a card on screen in case you guys are interested in any other tips and tricks videos and if you guys need any camos or anything like that doing I've got camo guides for getting gold diamond and dark matter camos so links for those will be in the description and a card on screen again for that if you guys are interested. I'll probably put some timestamps in the description too. Without further ado let's get into the tips. So the way to level up weapons fast is simply to get more weapon XP but obviously that can be a bit vague and not very helpful so how do you actually go about getting more weapon XP? So currently for Season 2, the best kind of game mode in Cold War to level up your weapons fast is actually Outbreak it seems. Getting kills with weapons in Outbreak seems to level up weapons super super fast as you'll hopefully see in the gameplay. It doesn't take that many zombie kills to get to the next weapon level and the thing is with Outbreak it's a much more sort of free roam mode and it's not as round based so you're kind of more free to get more kills. It seems you can get kills in zombies more quickly. And while I don't know whether the XP rate is higher per kill, it definitely seems to be that playing even a match of that game levels up your weapon a lot, helping the grind become a bit easier. So at the moment, I'd recommend the best game mode for leveling up your weapons fast is actually Outbreak. Obviously, you can play that through Zombies. There has just been a free-to-play weekend. I believe that's now over, so you have to have the full game for that. But if you do, I'd definitely recommend checking it out. And obviously, once you're playing Outbreak, just get as many kills as you can, obviously. Go for as many bosses as you can. Upgrade your weapons in terms of the damage level at the sort of weapon and armor upgrade stations. Also pack a punch them, get a good loadout, go for as many kills as you can and try and make the kills more interesting. You know, headshots, so like the critical kills, rapid kills, just stuff like that to be getting more kills and more weapon XP in Outbreak. So currently, like I say, that is the best mode it seems. Regular Zombies is good too, but this seems a better way to be honest in my opinion. It seems more reliable, you don't have the rounds of different enemies coming in. It's just sort of constant enemies and sometimes there's bosses there. You're more free to roam around, do whatever you want, so I'd highly recommend checking out that mode. But Outbreak isn't the only good mode, there's other good Zombies modes and also there's lots of great multiplayer modes too which we're going to talk about now. So definitely Fireteam Dirty Bomb is a great mode. You know, in low weapon levels, each kill will get you to the next weapon level, whereas in the higher weapon levels, several kills will get you to, to another weapon level and so on. So the weapon XP is really high in this game mode and you need to get as many kills as possible. And, you know, even when taking into account the longer time played in this mode, it seems getting weapon XP is still more efficient than other game modes. So it's really worth trying to go for this game mode where you can and boost, you know, the number of kills you get. Now for Fireteam Dirty Bomb, if you shoot an enemy, they'll go into like a last stand mode and you can then shoot them to kill them, otherwise they can be revived. But when you shoot them and put them into that last stand mode, once the enemy then dies, you'll get XP for your weapon because you've technically assisted or helped towards the death. Now if you then switch to your secondary weapon and shoot them, you'll actually end up getting weapon XP for both the primary and secondary weapons. And so you can effectively double the amount of weapon XP you're getting for both weapons because you're getting two amounts from one kill. So this is definitely worth considering when trying to level up your weapons. If you can, try and do multiple weapons at a time and kind of put two weapons together that you need to be leveling up. Now if you don't like playing Fireteam Dirty Bomb or you know you don't seem to be getting many kills in it, there are other modes too but these aren't quite as good obviously so you need to bear that in mind. Now the first obvious other way is to just get more kills but there's much more to it than that. So to get more kills obviously you need to be in matches with more enemies that you can get to and quickly. So for example Free For All, Domination, TDM and Kill Confirm and specifically hardcore is great for for example weapons that are difficult to use you know without good attachments or you know a brand new weapon that's level one and hasn't got any attachments if you go into hardcore and just get loads of kills it's really great to start getting a few basic attachments which can help you perform a little bit better with a weapon so that you can then get more kills in other game modes to level up the weapon faster so i think it's definitely worth to start off with getting used to the weapon in hardcore while also sort of getting some basic low level attachments as well an alternative to this is that you could use some blueprints that you've unlocked 
unlocked for a weapon which comes with built-in attachments so you don't have to struggle leveling up the base weapon with like zero attachments this way you can start straight away with a few attachments that might help you get more kills with the weapon if that makes sense so if you've got any blueprints for the weapon you're trying to level up definitely use those to start off with if it's like a low level weapon now as well as these sort of basic game modes face off 3v3 is also very good as long as you're getting a decent number of kills per game they're small maps you quickly get a lot of kills and the matches are fast too so if you're getting sort of a decent number of kills per game it's definitely worth considering face off as well as you can level up weapons incredibly fast now it's important to note that these can be very sweaty game modes people often join up in parties of three as well so you'd be playing against three teammates which can talk to each other which know how each other plays you know they kind of have got a one up on you i would recommend that if you can try and play with people that you know in parties or join other people's lobbies just that you are not playing by yourself because that will put you at a disadvantage however it's not the be all and end all so you should definitely still try and play in these games where you can without you know going to parties and stuff like that so it's not essential but it might be worth considering if you're getting into really sweaty lobbies there's also going to be mosh pits for small maps as well like nuketown 24 7 is live at the moment and it's been live for a long time it's a really really great mosh pit if you hang around the high flow areas of the map so for example if you're looking from the house window to the middle area of the map or if you push into the enemy spawns to get kills fast this is really really great combining nuketown and objective objective is just ridiculously fast xp so definitely worth considering nuketown as well and just get as many kills as you can on that map now once in game make sure you're moving about the map as much as possible and going to high flow areas of the map so for example the places that enemies will commonly go to like certain buildings or windows or if you're in an objective mode like domination then you obviously want to hover around these domination points and so on just to get as many kills as you can you need to obviously use the basic tips to stay alive longer so you know take cover when you can regularly don't run a gun or rush too much you need to reload when it's sensible pre-aim when going around corners drop and jump shot when you can or if you need to you can also slide and reload cancel and you can also use the stim shot tactical equipment to help you stay alive longer and get more kills there's also a few ways to kind of help you find more enemies on the map as well so you can use like the field mic the uav the advanced uav as it were as well you can use that to hunt down more enemies now and you can also use the tracker perk in tier 2 which is unlocked at level 23 and it lets you see enemy footsteps and kind of where they're going on the map to help you find the enemies go up behind them and kill them so obviously that helps as well get more kills and they're not often suspecting that you're there now it can all be very well and good to kind of get lots of kills and think okay that's great but that's still not enough to level up weapons fast you also need to make sure that you're getting more weapon xp from each kill there's a number of ways you can do this and generate just means that you need to be getting more exciting types of kills and you know earning medals from them so for example getting headshots long shots rapid kills which are like double or triple kills but you can also go for higher as well bloodthirsties or merciless point blank medals and so on by doing these types of kills it's not just a basic kill you're doing something specific with that kill and this often gives you more xp from each kill which means you can level up your weapons even faster and also destroying score streaks will get you the same amount of weapon xp as kills so it's definitely worth going for these two so for example taking down sentry turrets uavs they're not too difficult in this game they haven't got too much health and obviously using the engineer perk will help you see the score streaks across the map as well so definitely worth thinking about taking down score streaks it's not just about people another really important point is with cold war it seems to value kind of assists in the same way as kills so getting assists actually awards you the same amount of xp as a normal kill and so even if you don't think you can kill an enemy if you put one or two bullets in them hopefully a teammate will come along clean them up and that will give you that assist and it's you know quite decent considering you've only just put a small bit of damage into them but it still counts that you've kind of helped towards that kill and gives you the same amount of xp so definitely worth trying to get assist where you can because it's just as good as kills there's also a few other cool methods to really ramp up the amount of weapon XP you're getting. The first way is, you know, obviously the double weapon XP weekends. These are quite common, so take advantage of these when they're around. We've also got double weapon XP tokens in the game, which we can earn, similar to Modern Warfare and obviously Warzone as well. So these can be got from bundles as well, but you can also unlock them from the Battle Pass. And if you want to know how to level up tiers fast to get these weapon XP tokens, check out my Season 2 Battle Pass video. Use these tokens wherever possible, but just don't use these tokens while a double weapon XP weekend is active because that will not count and it will just be basically mean you're wasting the token. Now, on top of this, if you're on PlayStation, you can also play with teammates, either on PlayStation or through crossplay, and this will give you a 25% bonus weapon XP. So if you pair this with the other tips, it will help you 
level up your guns really really fast so if you can play with a teammate definitely do in zombies or multiplayer or warzone or whatever you also want to be unlocking the mastery camos so doing the mastery camo challenges like gold diamond dark matter and dark ether or its equivalent as this should help towards the weapon levels as well and then if you're playing warzone while you can't get as many kills you can actually be doing a lot of contracts to get you weapon xp as well so if you do as many contracts as you can each time you do a contract it gives you a contract bonus and it raises the amount of xp you get from the contract so the more contracts you do the more weapon xp you get each time you do a contract and by the end of it you can get a ton of weapon xp just from doing one contract to the other it can be something as simple as a recon contract or even something as simple as a supply run contract whatever you guys want to do definitely use contracts where possible as it really bumps up the amount of weapon xp you're getting from warzone zombies has a lot too especially if you get into the higher rounds to make it more efficient but you know if you've got a good survival strategy, you should be good in zombies. But anyway, those are the main methods for leveling up weapons fast in Cold War and kind of Warzone and um, especially in Season 2. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, be sure to leave a like. It really helps me out. And feel free to subscribe with your post notifications turned on by clicking the bell icon to stay up to date with all my latest Cold War and Warzone videos. You know, I've got videos on how to level up this Season 2 Battle Pass, camo challenges, challenge guides, weapons, best class setups and so on. So make sure you're sticking around for all of that. And if you guys have got any other tips for Cold War, especially in terms of leveling up weapons, feel free to leave that in the comment section. But really appreciate all the support hope you found this useful and hopefully i'll see you guys on the next video